Okay, I've started the recorder. Today we're talking about inheritance of traits. I'm going to get the door for him, for him please. There's not a whole lot of note taking on this, but there will be some. So, inheritance of traits. So, inheritance of traits. Traits are the genes that we've been talking about that you get from your parents. Okay? You inherit that. We call that inherent. So the genes that you get from your parents are your inherited traits. Okay? That makes that's what makes you who you are. So you get you get brown hair, blue eyes, whatever. Okay? A lot of people when they hear inheritance, they think of how much money you're gonna get or what land you're gonna get or whatever when your family passes away. And that is a type of inheritance, but in biology. We're not talking about money, we're talking about the genes and the DNA and stuff that you get from your parents. Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea LS3A. It's on the inheritance of traits. It's really on genetics. And genes are simply made of DNA. And so inheritance is how we pass our genes from one generation on to the next. And so this is a picture of my family. This is my dad, my mom, my two sisters, this is my brother. And this is me. And if you look at me, I look different from my parents, but there are similarities as well. And I owe all of that to my chromosomes. And so sometimes students struggle with what's a chromosome, gene, DNA, nucleus, all of that. So let me lay that out. First of all, we have a cell. And so in a typical organism that's eukaryotic like us, you're going to have a nuclei. And inside the nuclei, you're going to have a number of chromosomes. We have 46 in humans. If you take that chromosome and unravel it, what you'll find is that there are sections of it, and those are called genes, but the whole entire thing is made up of DNA. And so the DNA itself is made up of what are called nucleotides, and these are sometimes referred to as the four letters of DNA. And so again, to go backwards, the nucleotides so make up the DNA. Having, a single stretch of that DNA mean, is called a gene. gene and then is all of that less than 2 is wrapped up into DNA a chromosome, strand. and we have lots of chromosomes inside us. And so, what do the chromosomes do? Well, number one, they're a blueprint for how to make an organism. So, they're the directions on how. All right, so the, the uh, chromosomes is a blueprint on how to make an organism. So, it's, it's, your, it's what tells your body. When you're developing inside your mom, how to put you together, okay? How to make the organisms. So there are directions on how to make a human. How to make a human. They also, however, are an inheritance. In other words, the chromosomes are going to be what you pass on to the next generation, and it's what you receive from the generation before mm -hmm. you. And so let's get to the blueprint part. First. And so how is it the blueprint for an organism? Well, again, a section of DNA is going to be a gene. It's a number of different nucleotides, a number of different letters in a specific order. And so what our cell does is it will convert that DNA, which sits typically in the nucleus, into something called messenger RNA. All right, so it starts out with the DNA, and it looks just at the gene part, which is that less than 2%, okay? And it takes it and it transcribes it from DNA to mRNA. Notice the M is small. The rest of the letters are, are large, or are capital. And that M stands for messenger. So we are going from DNA to messenger RNA. Okay? It transcribes that piece of gene, that less than 2%, to mRNA. And that process is called transcription. So it's really like writing down a recipe and then it's out to the rest of the cell. And then the machinery of the cell is going to convert that message or that messenger RNA to a protein. And then that messenger RNA is um, translated into a protein. So they take that and they make a protein out of it. And I've told you how important proteins are to our body. Our body, do, proteins does a lot in our body. A lot of our body is made from proteins. We use lots of different types of proteins. Proteins is a good thing for humans. 
And so when you're looking at a human, when you're looking at me now, what you're really looking at are proteins or things that are of the result of protein action. My skin, my hair, my nails, my muscle, my bone, they're all made up of different things. And those proteins come from the DNA itself. And so really, if we go through this order in your cells, DNA makes messenger RNA, that makes proteins, and then the proteins make you. And so your DNA is not that amazing. All it is is just a copy of the directions on how to make a DNA. Now, as cells copy themselves, they have to make sure that the DNA is copied to each cell. And so the before a cell divides is going to... And where's that done at? In the PMAP. Metaphase? Huh? Put in the metaphase? No, nope. metaphase is where they line up in the middle. It is part of natosis. That's what the PMAP is. So, in what part of the PMAP do the cells copy themselves? Prophase. Prophase, yes. Remember, they copy their cells, then they do crossing over, and they share. And then they go into metaphase and they line up, okay? So the copying and the sharing is done in the prophase. It's all right in there. And what's neat about it about the helix is that it can unzip and, and then we can add the complementary letters. And then we have two new strands of DNA, or we've copied the chromosome. After we've done that, the chromosomes will kind of coalesce and then we divide. And so as the cell divides, it's splitting those chromosomes into the two cells, and then this can occur over and over and over. And so the DNA in all the cells in your body is identical, and it came from the, all of the DNA that was in that fertilized egg. And so how do we get to the inheritance part? Well, you're passing on half of your chromosomes to offspring. And so in sexual reproduction, that's what humans use, you're getting half of your chromosomes from your and half of your chromosomes from your dad. And so you're like your parents, you have half of their DNA, but you're different from your parents. And that's because you're getting a random half of the chromosomes from each of your parents. And so what is a population, a population, be it lions or ants or chimps or aspen trees, it's all going to be dated through inheritance, inheritance of DNA. And all of these lions look very similar, but they all look different. And they could owe inheritance to them. So how do you teach this? What's the teaching progression? On the lower elementary grades, you should talk about offspring. So offspring that are created by parents, a uh, big tree or a hummingbird or you, and you want to emphasize this point, that they're similar. And so if you these three birds, they all look like hummingbirds. There are going to be similarities in there, but their offspring is going to be slightly different than the two parents. Just like this small sapling is going to be similar to the tree that created it, or the trees that created it, but it's going to be different as well. And this baby is going to be very similar to mom, 50% similar, but it's also going to be different. And each generation is getting genes, but it's also those genes up, and so we get variation within each generation. As you move into the upper elementary grades, you want to talk about how, how we are created. We're created by our parents, and so they are giving us each a half set of their chromosomes, and that's making us the way we are. But our environment is also shaping are as well and so it's not a okay so when we first started talking about genetics we said that our genetics or our genes make us who we are makes you who you are right and that's true to a certain extent but your environment plays a big part in who you are um what you eat what you don't eat where you live uh who your parents are so if we have two identical twins, yep. okay, and for whatever reason they had to go up for adoption when they were babies, and, and one went this really way funny. and he lived in a big city and he lived with um, parents that were well to do and all that, yes? Most of the 1900s and 1800s is when that happened, when twins were separated. Right. And the other twin ended up out in the middle of Podunk nowhere. And his parents lived paycheck to paycheck. And there was things that went on in his household that 
uh, most kids should not ever see. <clears throat> Parents partied, um, alcoholic drugs, um, his parents didn't pay attention to him a whole lot, didn't give him a whole lot of attention. Um, they didn't send him to school all the time. I mean, if he got up, got himself ready, and got on the bus and went to school. If he didn't, he didn't. Okay? And y'all look at me like, what? This happens in our world. It happens in our world. So those two twins, even they were identical, because of the environment that they were brought up in, makes them different in a lot of ways. They have a different personalities. They have different characteristics about them. So just know that your environment can also make you who you are. Okay? Whether it be good from your environment or bad from your environment. And we get both. Okay? Some people get better food than other people get. Some moms are better at cooking than other moms. So the moms that cook real good, they make big meals and they cook and everything. And the moms that don't really cook real good, they go to McDonald's a lot. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So whereas the people going to McDonald's getting as much nutrients from their food as the mom that's cooking at home. Yeah. Probably not, because that mom's probably fixing uh, a more well, you know, it's not just a hamburger and potato, uh, french fries. You know, there's actually other types of vegetables and stuff being made, which gives you more nourishment, more the minerals and vitamins and all that kind of stuff that you need, okay? Not only the nature, in other words, the DNA that we get from our parents, but it's the nurture. It's what happens to us during our life that shapes so us. So those are called nature and nurture. What you inherited is your nature. What you get from your environment is nurture, okay? And gives us the characteristics that we have. And so, for example, the food we get, the nutrients we get, um, the chemicals that we're exposed to are going to change us as an individual. And then the uh, experiences that we have in our life. Learning, for example, is going to change what we will become. And so the DNA tell us a lot about what you're going to become, but they don't tell us the whole picture. In fact, they only tell us about half. As you move into middle school, then we want to start ad identifying these terms. The idea that the cell's nucleus has chromosomes. That chromosome is made up of a number of different genes. And y'all should know what all of these on here is, because we've talked and about it. Building blocks of DNA are going to be nucleotides. You should push this home that humans have 23 pair of chromosomes. And so we have a chromosome one that we got from our mom and a chromosome one that we got from our dad. And a two that we got from our mom and a two that we got from our dad. And so each of these chromosomes in humans are gonna have thousands of genes on it. And those genes, the gene you get from your mom and the gene you get from your dad, the way they act together is going to determine the way you look. And so, for example, red hair is going to be caused by one gene. And if you have both copies of that red gene, you're going to have red hair. Now, it's not as simple as that. Most traits are actually caused by multiple genes. And so skin color is going to be caused by a number of just different genes. Remember, that your eye color is also chromosome. determined by That's what we're passing genes. on to the next generation. We also want to talk about mutations, and so if we ever have a change in the DNA, then we have a change in the messenger RNA, and then we can have a change in the protein. So, mutations. When we think of mutations, a lot of times we think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where something has really mutated into something else, right? But in the science world, when they're talking about mutations, especially when we're talking about genes and stuff, is when something has happened to your DNA and it has changed it. And what could, and, and it could mutate it. So what could happen to your DNA that would make that happen for what we've learned to this point? A disorder. A disorder. Just getting different genes from mom and dad, that's gonna mutate your genes from what theirs were. That's the reason you don't, you're not exactly like your mom, you're not exactly like your dad. You have 50% of each of them. And depending on how their genes come together, when you are in your development stages, it could be considered a mutation. Okay, so mutation is not always bad or bizarre. Yes. And radiation can affect it too. Yes, radiation can affect it too. And usually radiation affects it to the negative. Okay, but just now, I just want you to know that mutations can be big and they can be small, but in our, those things you see on TV and things mutate, that doesn't happen 
a whole lot, okay? Mutation, when we're talking mutations, we're talking about cells and DNA and genes and stuff like that. Mutations, red hair caused by one change in the DNA and blue eyes as well. And so all people who have red hair, people who have blue eyes could trace their ancestor to one person who had that one mutation. And all the diversity of life had to come originally from changes in the DNA or, or mutate. You also want to get more specific on what our parents are passing on to us. And so in a sperm, a male being half of all of his chromosomes. So he's giving 23 chromosomes to the offspring. Mom is giving 20 chromosomes in the egg as well. And as those combine together, that creates a new organism. And that organism, if they have kids, is going to pass off half of their chromosomes as well. As you move into high school... Okay, so your parents give you half of their chromosomes. You get half from mom and you get half from dad, right? So, what part of your chromosomes will your great grandkids have? Or what part of your mom's chromosomes will your great grandchild have? See if y'all can figure it out. So maybe like when they split them, what does that mean? Like if you have the kids that have both of those combined, when they can have kids, would it kind of have both mom and dad? Or will it kind of be half one of them? Okay, so that, basically that's how it works. So you get half of, let's, talk, let's just talk about mom. You get half of your chromosomes or your genes and your DNA from your mom. So when you have a child, your child will get half of yours, which means they got a fourth of your mom's, right? So then when your child has a child, that child will have a fourth of your DNA and will only have one eighth of their mother's of your mother's DNA. You see how I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then it just keeps dividing down and down and down. Yes. One thirty second. I mean one thirty second. Of a of the of my of my mother's DNA with my great 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 grandpa. Yes. Yes. One great. But that's how it works. It just keeps reducing down by half each time. Yes. Five point five and three quarters of the chromosomes would be for me. Okay. According to your calculations. And that's how you calculate it, okay? Five and three quarters would come from you, your great great grandchild. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's five and three quarters percent. No. Like chromosomes, like I was forty six. Oh, so you did it from getting the 46 and reducing it down from yeah. there. Okay, I can figure out where you're just coming up with the five. I was like, where's that coming from? But that, that's a good way to do it. I see, yeah. I hadn't thought about doing it that way. I was, I was just doing, reducing the half and the half and the half and the half. I was gonna do it that way, but I didn't want to have to pull my calculator and I knew I couldn't do that in my head, so. Oh, gosh forbid y'all can't live without that calculator. All right, you Hey, school, you want to start talking to Gene Express? So that is the reason why if your great grandfather was redheaded and another and you don't have another redhead pop up into your family until three or four generations later, that's why it could still pop up. Okay? Because you have so many of your original of your grandpa's or your great grandpa's original genes. And one of them was his gene for red hair. Yes. Since we're twins and uh, both of our, our mom's side and our dad's side both had twins. Our dad's because that is the twin. Yeah, paternal. Uh, usually twins skip a year. Well, skip a generation, so. In theory. Yeah, so our parents shouldn't have had twins if he was a twin. But it happens. It happens. There's always, remember, we learned last year in science, science is in theory. Or, and that means in theory it should work this way right yeah. but sometimes our theory doesn't happen that way we have these um things that pop in and and changes okay and so that goes back to how your mom and your dad's um genes came together when y'all's egg was fertilized and then and then your egg broke yeah. off broke apart and we have you too yeah, it, okay it did Siamese, okay, did I, sorry. Siamese twins. 
Usually Siamese twins is when the egg doesn't completely break in half. Yeah. It just divides part of the way. But if it wouldn't have divided any at all, there'd just be one egg. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
square is named original seed hunt, who devised the following approach. Draw a large square divided into four smaller squares. You should have two rows and two columns. All right, draw a large square and then break it into four smaller squares. So you can draw a square and then put a T in the middle of it. Okay? And they call them columns. Huh? Georgie, did you get the definition down or did you just draw the box? Guys, wasn't real happy with my note book testing, taking scores. When I say to write something down, you better be writing it down. Because I can guarantee you that I will be having more notebook checks. The next time I have a notebook check, whoever makes the lowest grade on the notebook checks will sit right up here by me. That way I can watch what you're writing down and what you're not writing down. So they understand that. Everybody got this now? I hope you'll put today's date on your note. Y'all need to start doing that too. Makes my notebook check grade go a lot faster. Also, that lets you know what we did on what day. You can always, like I said, well, what did we do on Thursday? And you can go back and you'll know which set of notes you took on that Thursday. All right, we got it now. The approach, draw a large square divided into four smaller squares. You should have two rows and two columns. One parent is drawn, then one parent is drawn on the side. Shown here in green. The diagram is used to predict the genetic makeup of the children. Also shown here in green. In our example, each square represents 25% of the child will All right, so the whole box is 100% of the DNA, so 50% of your moms, 50% of your dads, that you receive from them that's going to tell you what the color of your hair is. Okay? Now that's any, any, any female type also has to do with more than just your appearance. It also has to do with how your whole body is put together. But each square only represents one thing. Each square. Okay? So you're going to do pattern squares on, say, all your characteristics, all right? So if the whole square equals 100%, how much does one of the small squares represent? What percentage does it represent? 25. 25%, and you need to know that. You need to know that each square, square represents 25%, <coughs> because you will have questions that says, what percentage um, is going to have the dominant trait. 